welcome to Summit Church on this Lord's Day. We are thankful that we can be in this place together to worship God. Uh, we are also thankful that uh, we have Pastor Paul Roberts back with us uh, to um, deliver the message this morning and participate in worship. We are thankful that he can be here in David's absence as he is on vacation. So um, by way of announcements, you'll see just a few of those things in um, in your bulletin, and they've been running on the screens. Just to call your attention to the Christmas tree that's here in the sanctuary, that is for, I guess now what will be Christmas in August, um, uh, just to an, an opportunity to help His Kids Christian School, the students, the staff of the school, and there's tags up on the tree, different things that uh, are needed. If you would like to participate in that way, um, monetary donations are also. Um, Welcome for that. Are there any other announcements? <coughs> then seeing none, let us um, join together in our gathering song number 16. We praise you, O God, our Redeemer. Please stand together.
come to the time in our service of our prayer of confession. Every time we gather together, we need to come clean with God. We need to be open with God. We need to say, oh Lord, we know we are sinful, but we trust in your mercy. And so we come to our prayer of confession. Let us read it together. It comes from Psalm 51 in unison. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy steadfast love, according to thy abundant mercy. Blot out of my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done that which is evil in thy sight, so that thou art justified in thy sentence, and blameless in thy judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Fill me with joy and gladness. Let the bones which thou hast broken rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Let us spend a moment of silence, personally talking to the Lord and confessing our sins. Brothers and sisters, as far as the east is from the west and the north is from the south, so far has God removed our sins to those who believe in Jesus Christ. Believe in the gospel. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. And let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. <coughs> we come time now to our pastoral prayer. And are there prayer requests that we should lift up at this time? Any prayer requests that you'd like to have lifted up during this time? Yes. Um, for Pastor Larry, who has um, decided to take the attention. Any others? Pastor Paul, um, if you could keep the Moros in prayer, blessings and Prayers for Russ Morrow. Let us come together in prayer. Gracious and heavenly Lord, we, we thank you so much that we can come and gather together in worship and come before you in prayer. We thank you that you call us your children. And as your children, you love for us to run to you and express our needs before you. Not because you don't know them or you haven't been following along in our lives, but because you need your children to say, you, we need you. We depend on you, O God. So hear our prayer. We 
do pray for Larry, who's been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. We know what a scary, scary word that must have been to be told about. And Lord, we pray now that your healing wisdom, that your healing touch would be with the doctors who are dealing with Pray that Larry would know that you are there to strengthen him, give him wisdom, to touch him with your healing touch. And so we do ask, Lord, that you would touch him. We bring before you Russ. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would surround him with your comfort, your grace, your strength. Be with the family, Lord. Thank you for their lives of living for you, Lord Jesus. So we pray for your protection and comfort to be with them. We pray, O oh Lord, a prayer for our nation, a prayer for our leaders, that they would truly listen to your voice, and that we would come together as a nation reconciled to you and reconciled to one another. Bind this land, O oh Lord, that is so fractured. We ask this all in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the ninth chapter. I'm so thankful that Carol got me this, this version that has the big writing, large print. <laughs> it says, And getting into a boat, Jesus crossed over and came to his own city. And behold, some people brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son. Your sins are forgiven. And behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, Rise. Pick up your bed and go home. And he rose and went home. And when the crowd saw it, they were afraid and they glorified God who had given such authority to men. Let us pray. Gracious and heavenly Lord, we pray that as we gather around in your house, that your Holy Spirit would come down upon us so that we might have ears to hear your word speaking to us. That by your Holy Spirit, our eyes would be opened so that we might see how you are present among us right now. That your Holy Spirit would come down upon us so that, Lord, our hearts and souls would be open to feel your presence right now. And, O oh Lord, we pray that our minds, by the power of the Holy Spirit, will be opened so that your thoughts would transform our thoughts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. I hope everybody could hear me. I didn't have my microphone on until just now, but uh, usually I speak pretty loud, so it's, it's okay. It's, it's all right. And uh, camera, that is not going to see much of me that way, just to let you know that I'm going to move around wherever that is, okay? Um, this morning, we have this wonderful passage, this wonderful story of Jesus and these friends of a paralytic man who come and take their friend to Jesus. 
And, and usually when we read passages, we, we tend to focus on one thing rather than seeing the context of the whole passage. So a lot of times it's like, oh yeah, they brought him to Jesus, and Jesus healed him. And the key is Jesus healed him. And, and we kind of forget that when, when, the, when the gospel writer was writing the story, he wanted us to understand from beginning to end and understand the meaning of, of all of it. And so we come to this part where we're say, seeing that Jesus is looking and watching these four or five, we're not exactly sure the number of men, who come carrying this paralytic on a, on a pallet to Jesus. They are, his friends who said, you can't do it, so we'll do it for you. And I'm thinking, how often do we forget that we as brothers and sisters of Christ, the church, are called to bring people to Jesus? This is not somehow that God does not use us in our faith, in our hearts and souls, in the process of healing people, of touching people, of saving people. And so we should just skirt by this part of the passage that reminds us that these four men said, we have the faith, we have the belief to carry this faith to the foot of Jesus. And my question is, when's the last time you brought Jesus into a discussion with your friends and family? When's the last time when somebody was really struggling and having problems in their life, did you say, you know what? I, I don't have any answers for your problem, but, but I know the one who does, Jesus. Or do we tend, and maybe it's a question of faith, do we tend to back away from saying Jesus to people? Or offering Jesus to people? When's the last time you said when the person was expressing you, maybe at work, maybe in a family event, maybe in some social event, and you hear they're struggling, did you listen to them, talk with them, and say, you know what, I'd be glad to pick you up and bring you to church so that you can talk to God, and I'll sit right there with you and as we listen to God's word in Jesus. Or do we tend to just kind of See, we're reminded in the story that these guys, we don't know how long they traveled to bring this man, but Jesus is back in his hometown of Capernaum. And while he's back in his hometown of Capernaum with his disciples, these men, wherever they were, said, we believe that Jesus is the one who can help you, and we're willing to take you there to make sure you're at his feet. So do we remember that as well? Are there people sick who need you to talk about Jesus to them? I have a very dear, dear, dear friend. And he's in the hospital right now. He, he's, he's a believer. He's been going to church for 60 years. And he's laying in that hospital and he's struggling. He's struggling. He's struggling with what to say to God, what to pray. I mean, he's really, he's he's really struggling. He said, you know, I feel like all, all I'm doing is going backwards and I'm declining and I don't know what to say, I don't know what to do. And I just said this to him. I said, David, there are times when because of sickness, health problems, that you struggle to pray. That, that you struggle maybe even to have confidence in God's healing, but that's when he come beside you. And I said to him, I'll bring you to Jesus. I'll lead you. You simply just trust and follow. That's what we're called to do. To enter people's lives and not be afraid to talk about Jesus. When you're having that family dinner and somebody's expressing some struggles, some problems, brothers and sisters, it's not the time to forget about Jesus. Oh, it's family. I don't want to get into problem. No, that's when we do talk about Jesus. Because brothers and sisters, 
either we believe that Jesus is the answer, Jesus is the healer, Jesus is the Son of God, and that when somebody is sick, when somebody's having a problem, when somebody's having a business problem, on the job problem, whatever it might be, we do know who has the answer, right? It's Jesus. And yet so often we shy away. We don't bring that person and carry that person to Jesus. We let them go. This story reminds us of the call on our lives as believers to say, I'll pick up the back. I'll carry this person to Jesus. Brothers and sisters, don't tell people you'll just pray for them. Really pray for them. God hears us. We're told that when they bring them, bring this man to Jesus. And I think in the commentaries I read, the assumption is, and by how Jesus responds with saying their faith, he's not just talking about the men who carried but also for the paralytic man, that they, they came in faith to Jesus. They, they came believing that Jesus has the power take care of this man. The man believed he did. He just needed somebody to take him. And Jesus turns to them knowing of their faith and he says be of good cheer. Now interesting enough, the interpretation today says be of good cheer or whatever it is, son. But, but actually the literal the Greek is not son but child. And if you literally translate it to Greek, it is courage child. I think there's a reason he did not use son or daughter or man, but child. Child connotates when we use the word child of a tenderness. You know how we are? I mean, when I'm with my grandchildren, I have two, four, and two, I'm tender with them. I'm compassionate. Much different maybe than when you have a teenager or you have an adult. With a child, we tend to, it brings out our compassion, our tenderness. When my little granddaughter said, boy, oh, I mean, oh, now you come here, you grab her, kiss the boo-boo, you know. The, the sense of this, this overwhelming tenderness. And Jesus, I think, look at it. Five, at least five grown men. And he said, courage, child. You can see right through to them. It says, I speak to you as a child. I care. I have compassion. I love you. All those things we think about how we relate to children. Jesus is saying to them, be of good cheer. That is, man. Have courage because the one you just brought this man to is the one you can count on, is the one you can trust, is the one that you know sees you and sees your struggle and your problem and will respond to you. I really care. Brothers and sisters, you know what? That's a great reminder of us. Be of good cheer. Be happy. Be joyful. Because the one that we come to, Jesus, cares about us like he cared for a child. He has compassion for you, love for you, tenderness for you. He knows your problem, and he wraps you in his arms and says, I'll take care of you. Brothers and sisters, be of good cheer. Have your spirits rise. Because the one that we worship, that we come to today, Jesus, is the one who looks, looks at us and says, you're my child, and I'll take care of you. Have that cheer. Bring people with that cheer. With the confidence that the one we're bringing sees right through you. He saw right through those men and said, listen, children, I got you. 
May you have that same confidence of being cheerful, joyful, knowing that the one who looks at you is saying, be a good cheer. Have joy, courage. You're my child. I got you. And then Jesus does the amazing thing. They came because he couldn't walk, right? And Jesus responds by saying, your sins are forgiven. I mean, they came thinking they're going to make this guy walk, and he starts by, you're forgiven. Brothers and sisters, Jesus, when he sees us, sees always the deeper need that each and every one of us has. The deeper need. And many times, Jesus is able to see, and you and I have to recognize that some of the physical illnesses we have, some of the predicaments that we're in the midst of, some of the struggles we are going through are not just physical, not just mental. The heart of it is our spiritual condition with God. And so Jesus looks at this man and says, your sins are forgiven. The crowd around, especially the religious leaders, are deeply offended by this. How can Jesus say that they are forgiven? How can Jesus look at them? Only God can forgive. By what authority does he have this ability to say your sins are forgiven? Brothers and sisters, we have to remember that Jesus is standing there saying, your sins are forgiven. He's saying, I have the power. I have the relationship with God that I have the authority to reconcile you to God. I bridge that gap between that man and the God we come to. Jesus, is by making that statement, is saying he's the one who reconciles us to God. It is only Jesus who offers forgiveness. And you and I are fortunate to know the end of the story, right? We know that his authority, his statements are true because he was willing to go to a cross and die for each and every one of our sins. He was nailed to that cross, bled for us, his body broken for us so that we might be free from sin. That when Jesus says, you are forgiven, he has the authority to say that and the power to say that because he is the resurrected Jesus Christ victorious over sin and death. And so he says, your sins are forgiven. They question and say, by what authority? He says, okay, I, I'll do what you're asking. In many ways, he's saying in this passage, he says, I'll show you what authority I have. And should I say your sins are forgiven or rise, take up your coat and walk home? And he just says, so that you might understand who I am, the authority I have. I tell you, I tell you, young man, rise, take up your path, and go home. And the man rises, takes that path, and he walks home. They are stunned. Because Jesus does have the power to heal. He has the power to forgive. And many times we come to Jesus and it's the blend of a sickness and a sin that both need to be cleansed. Amen? Amen. Many times we know in our life what we really need is total healing, not partial. He could have told this man, get up, walk, and he would have been healed of his ability to not walk. But he would not have been reconciled to God and be fully healed for eternity. But because Jesus says, your sins are forgiven, get up and walk. This man is totally restored, totally reconciled. Some of us may be walking around here who have felt God's healing power. Some of us have, may have been people who have said, oh, I know that God has helped me through this problem. 
but you're still walking around saying something's wrong. Something's wrong in my life. Why am I not joyful? Why am I still in some predicaments I keep getting myself into? Could it be because what you don't need is a physical healing, but you do need a spiritual healing? Could it be that you need to once again come to Jesus and receive his mercy and grace, his forgiveness? Could it be that the only one who can heal your emotional problems, your mental problems, your maybe even physical problems, but all of it is Jesus, and we need to come to him and experience a total healing, not a partial healing. These men and the crowd were overjoyed at what Jesus did. He came and healed them. Healed them totally. This man came up from his pallet reconciled to God and healed him. Are you reconciled to God? Have you experienced total healing? Total healing from your toes to the top of your head. Total healing, not just physically, but in your soul, in your heart, in your mind. Or is there something you need today to come to Jesus with? Or is there somebody you know who you need to bring to Jesus? And it's not just their physical healing. Let us come. Let us be reconciled to God. Let us bring others to this reconciling God who has given us the tremendous gift of his Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let the people of God say, Amen. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have the unbelievable opportunity now to be fed by the Lord Jesus Christ. What a gift. Jesus is at this table. He wants to feed us. He is present. He's the author of this table. He's the founder of this feast. He is the one who gathers us together now to be around us. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. People who come from east and west, from north and south, they sit at the table of the kingdom of God. This is Jesus' table, and our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to them, and their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Let us pray. Holy Lord, Father Almighty, everlasting God, we thank you for commanding light out of darkness, for dividing the waters in the sea and dry land, for creating the whole world and calling it good. We thank you for making us in your image to live with each other in love, for the breath of life, the gift of speech, the freedom to choose your way. You have told us in your purpose in the commandments to Moses and called for justice in the cry of prophets. Through long generations, you have been fair and kind to all your children. Great and wonderful are your works, Lord God Almighty. Your ways are just and true. With men of faith from all times and places, we lift our hearts in joyful praise for you alone are holy. Holy, 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 God of power and majesty, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O God most high. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son Jesus who lived with us sharing joy and sorrow. He told your story, healed the sick, and was a friend of sinners. Obeying you, he took up his cross and was murdered by men he loved. We praise you that he is not dead, but has risen to rule the world and that he's still the friend of sinners. 
We trust him to overcome every power to hurt or divide us, so that when you bring in your promised kingdom, we will celebrate victory with him. Remembering the Lord Jesus, we break bread and share one cup, announcing his death for the sins of the world and telling his holy resurrection to all people and nations. Great God, give your Holy Spirit now in the breaking of bread so that we may be drawn together, joined to Christ the Lord, receive new life, remain his glad and faithful people until we feast with him in glory. Let us now say the prayer that our precious Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us read our litany. Is, uh, found on the screen. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink of it. Remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. He who believes in me shall never thirst. A and D. In the same way, Jesus took the cup after supper and said, this is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me.
God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen.